politics behind the coronavirus pandemic has been the source of inspiration for one comedian. Michael Spicer, Twitter's favourite fictional advisor, has gone viral with his online sketches where he speaks into the imaginary earpieces of the world's most important leaders, like this one. A lot of people are getting better. No, they're not. They're doing very well. All of them are doing well. No, you're doing that thing where you exaggerate every time you open your mouth, so stop doing that. We're very well organised. We're very well organised. We have great talent. We have great talent. Great doctors. Great doctors. Great... <coughs> great... <coughs> great everyone. <laughs> Joining us now is the comedian behind the room next door sketches, Michael Spicer. And we recognise that sofa, don't we? Hello to you, Michael Spicer. Thanks for joining us. Superstar. Where did you come up with the idea? How did I come up with the idea? I, uh, I was watching uh, Boris Johnson give uh, an interview uh, when he was um, running for leader. And, um, and, and he was asked, what, what does he like to do in his spare time? And he said that he paints model buses. So the, the, the answer he gave was just so muddled and confused. And it felt like he was struggling with that answer. Like he, he thought, well, shall I confess that I do this or shall I lie? And um, it, just, uh, it just seemed to me that there, was, there, there could potentially be somebody in the room next door feeding him those lines and really kind of struggling with it. So that, that, that's, that's all I did. I just did a sketch after I saw it. OK. Who was the inspiration behind your character? Was there one? No. No, oh. it's just that it was li literally an afterthought. I, I, I thought that would be funny. And um, I mean, that's usually what I do when I when I do sketches. I just think, yeah, I'll do it because, uh, you know, it's easy to do. It'll make people laugh. I can put it on Twitter and see what happens. I had no idea uh, this would all happen. Uh, you say it's easy to do, but there must be a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah, well, yes, yes, no, that's true. A lot of work does go into it, but um, I've done... Um, quite a few sketches in the past and I'm, I'm aware of my limits so I kind of you know I've, I've got my iMovie on my laptop I've, I film everything on my phone um, I've invested in a tripod so that's great uh, <laughs> but yeah basically it's just it's just me at home so basically I was doing lockdown stuff years before we were in lockdown back then. so that's it and you say um, that you've invested in a tripod. I mean, you're a bit of a superstar now, aren't you? You'd be able to pay for that very easily. Did I not see you on the Late Late Show? <laughs> yes, you did. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that money's not come through yet. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, I, it's it, no, the fact is, is that I've been able to quit my job, which is like the dream, isn't it? So. Um, uh, the, the the strange thing is, is that I um, left my job and then started working from home. And then a week later, everyone else in the world did. So a very peculiar time for this to be happening, really. And you've, written, you've decided to write a book? Yes, yes. I, uh, well, somebody said uh, from uh, a publishing company said, um, if you're thinking of writing a book, I'd be very interested in publishing it. So uh, uh, yeah, my brain started ticking over and I thought, what would make a good book? And it, it would essentially be like a, a, a journal, but there will be lots of other things in there. So it will feel like a, like a file full of emails and texts and scripts with doodles on them and all sorts. So it's, it's a comedy book, really. Uh, because what you do is very visual. So how are you going to translate that into a book or is something completely different, is it? It is, it is different. It is different. I mean, you know, obviously, if people buy my book, they'll know um, what... Um, my sketches are like, and so they'll probably read with my voice, and they'll hopefully. Uh, I can't be there for the comic timing, but if the, if they um, if they buy the book, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Oh, well, we're looking forward to seeing that. That's out later on in the year, isn't it? I mean, if you had to choose a favourite of the uh, spoofs that you do, uh, which one would it be up to date? Um. Uh, I don't really have a favourite, but I would probably choose uh, the Pretty Patel interview because, <laughs> to date, it is the most successful. I mean, it really went berserk. Um, so that has a special place in my heart. OK, well, we'll see if we can uh, dig that one out for our viewers. But it's good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Love when the video... When's the next Thank one you. coming out?
Um, well, I've, I did one last night for um, for the, uh, the Late Late Show, uh, and if it's funny, then I imagine they'll put it on next week. If it's not funny, you won't see it at all. OK, I'll bear that in mind. It's good to talk to you, Michael. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. We have managed to find the uh, Pretty Patel one. It looks something like this. Clear history in relation to counter-terrorism offences. Terrorism offences, not counter-terrorism offences, you brainless wasp. Greater support for victims. And greater support for the victims of counter-terrorism. Terrorism! Terrorism! Why can't you just say it? It's easier to say.